And Bill, I wanted to get an athletic director on. I've been surrounding myself with these smart coaches all these days, and I wanted a veteran like you here to help me out. Thank Games you, like we just saw cause us to retire early, don't they? That's right. It's a lot more enjoyable watching a game like this now. <laughs> on my immediate left is Joe Yagel, the coach of the fine Batavia team. His ball club went 20 and 7 this year being beaten in the sectional final by none other than Bennett Academy, the team that you're going to see very shortly. Joe, let's start with you. Uh, we got to comment on this last game and then tell us what you can about uh, this fine uh, Bennett Academy. Well, Jack, the last game, as we all know, was a super ball game. And uh, I think it was some of Illinois basketball uh, at its best, no question about it. I think that uh, both teams were extremely well prepared and uh, particularly in that uh, that overtime game showed a great deal of poise. Bill, what did you think of that uh, last ball game before we uh, proceed with the Quincy game? Well, Jack, as you as you know, having gone through it yourself, it's always a shame to have to see one team drop out when the game's that close. I thought both teams played extremely well. I was very impressed with the matchup zone of Maine South. I hadn't seen Maine South prior to yesterday, and uh, I think they um, showed two different types of ball games. Yesterday, people were a little disappointed in the lack of action, and they came out and showed plenty of it at the outset today. And it was just an extremely well played game to burn off the batting game to watch. And a well coached. Right. Uh, Bill, let's go on to uh, uh, this game coming up. Everybody is impressed with Quincy. Uh, the Ch town of Champaign Urbana has been ringing uh, about Quincy. And uh, everybody kind of thinks it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to blow Bennett out. What are your feelings? Well, again, I'm not as familiar with the two teams uh, throughout the year. Uh, however, I would agree with you that Quincy looked awful good yesterday. Of course, I think yesterday people would have probably guessed that it would be East Moline and Quincy, and Maine South proved that you, you can't take anything for granted. And I think Bennett Academy against Lockport was uh, a big surprise to many of us who have followed Lockport and been in that area and, and watched them against Bloom last Tuesday night when they played on almost near-perfect ball game. And I think this afternoon's game will be a lot like today's uh, first game. I think it could go either way. I think Quincy probably has to be the favorite at this point. But uh, as you know, strange yeah. things happen. Uh, Joe, you have played Bennett. Uh, if you were Bill Geist, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. Yeah. Okay. I really wish I was. All right. What would you do to go against this Quincy ball club? Well, I think Bill's got to do the same thing that got him here, Jack. I don't even question about it. Uh, he has a very well-disciplined ball club, and uh, they use their big men, I think, extremely well, and I think particularly well against uh, a pressing-type defense. Uh, they bring him up to the timeline and, uh, and throw the ball up to him, and uh, that, uh, that neutralizes a lot of uh, quickness, and, uh, of course, uh, Quincy does have a, a size disadvantage. I agree with Bill. I think that uh, on the basis of what we saw yesterday, Quincy would have to be a favorite, but uh, we certainly can't sell Bennett short, and uh, they did a fine job. Quickly, who's going to win the game, Bill? Second game, I'll stay with Quincy. You're going to stay with Quincy. And how about you, Joe? I think it's a toss-up, but I'll go with Quincy as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I admire your courage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we've had a, a great coach's circle here. Uh, next, we'll be talking about the IHSA IH statewide competition and events other than basketball. I'm confused, as you can see, man. We'll get back to it right after this. Paul Floor here at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana to talk to two gentlemen who are vitally concerned with the state tournament. On my left is Liz Astroff. He's the executive secretary of the Illinois High School Association. And the gentleman on my right is Mr. Bill Sullivan, and he is the executive director of the Illinois Principals Association. And I know that your two groups work very closely together, gentlemen. First of all, welcome to our tournament telecast. Liz, um, we've talked about the championships, what, 24 now the IHSA has? It will be 24 next year. We have 23 actually this year, and with the advent of girls cross country next year, we'll have 24 athletic state championships. Speaking of the girls, they'll be here at the Assembly Hall next week, won't they? Yes, they will be here for their third annual state tournament championship in basketball. I've had the, the good fortune to have worked on the preceding two, and I gather that girls basketball has gained momentum in the past couple of years? It certainly has in our state, and our attendance figures that that is a good gauge has almost doubled in the last two years. Fine, fine. Uh, Bill, tell me about the Illinois Principals Association. Where are you located, first of all? We're located at Springfield, Tom. What, what are the goals of your group? Actually, uh, uh, the, they have many worthwhile goals. The ultimate goal, of course, would be to provide the leadership, so in turn is to provide every boy and girl 
with the best possible education that they can absorb to better fit them to become more useful, uh, well-rounded, uh, participating members of our society. Tell me about the tie between your group, the Illinois Principals Association, and Liz as the Illinois High School Association. I know you work closely together. Yes, we always have. Uh, after all, it is the, uh, uh, both associations are very similar, and it's the principal making the decisions affecting uh, the welfare of boys and girls, and principals are the advocates of their students. Um, we share many of the same members. I think everyone that sits on the IHSA Board of Directors, as an example, is a member of the IPA. We share a fall conference. We think educationally is second to none. It'll be held this year at Arlington Heights. Liz, let me get back to you for a final question, if I may. This is the most visible the IHSA is, this basketball tournament, the telecast. How do you view the role of the extracurricular activities like this tournament uh, in, in the making up of, uh, of a student? When we look at the total program for a student, we believe that competing in the extracurricular activities, that's athletic and non-athletic, is the other half of education. Now, however, it's a privilege and it's not a right to participate as participation is voluntary. Probably the most recent study that I know of, which I heard about yesterday, is that 96% of all dropouts in high school have never participated in, in an extracurricular activity. So we think it really has merit from that standpoint uh, to make a student achieve in high school. And we've also found by studies that when they're in athletics or in activity, their academic record is better and their citizenship record is better. Excellent. Liz Astroff is the Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Mr. Bill Sullivan is the Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. Gentlemen, congratulations. The fine job both you men do in your organizations. Thanks for coming by. It's a great tournament. Pleasure for us to be here. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Tom. Thank you, Liz. Now let's get back to Tournament Central. In just a minute or so, Tom Kelly and Jack Burmaster will be ready to give you an overlook at the two teams who will meet in our next game. We'll continue with that coverage right after this. Afternoon. We'll take a look at some highlights of the game in which Bennett Academy defeated Lockport Central 43-39. Bennett Academy is located in Lyle, Illinois, 125 miles north of Champaign. 4.35 to play in the middle. Underneath it goes to Myers. Myers to the side for good. Pat Odo. And Lyle Bennett comes up with it. This is Conrad Redling taking it all the way. Yes. Beautiful. Conrad Doyle Lang. Boy, this is like, you know, playing the New York Yankees. Yeah, you got to beat tradition, and they're beating tradition right now. Well, they certainly are. And from the side is Odo. Pat Odo picks up his eighth point of the ball game. Bennett Academy, Jack Burmaster. Nice basketball team. Big Mike Lang in the middle. Some good ball handlers out front. And Conrad Doyle comes off the bench. I like this team. Better team than people think they are, I believe. Well, we were talking in the coaches' circle, and, uh, you know, a lot of people down here think that uh, Quincy's going to run away with it. Uh, I tend to disagree, Tom. I think Bill Geist has had a chance to see what they did last night and prepare for this game. I don't know how he's going to handle this tight, full-court zone pressure defense. I personally would put that big Mike Lang right up in the middle, throw the mm -hmm. ball high to him with his 240 pounds and let him turn around, and you know how strong he is. I have a feeling that they can handle this press, and it's going to be a closer ball game than people think. Bennett Academy, of course, is a much bigger ball club than um, Quincy. Uh, Lang at 6'8", and the other two men there, uh, Otto and Higgins, come in about 6'4 apiece. In fact, Bagley, the guard, is 6'4", and the other guard, Conrad, isn't even six feet. Put. Everybody's taller than Quincy, aren't they? <laughs> There's another good one, Kevin Conrad. Yes. Outstanding uh -huh. guard. He's in the class of an Isaiah Thomas and the rest, I think. All right, now let's take a look at the highlights of that fourth quarter final game yesterday in which a Quincy defeated Manley of Chicago 75-63. Quincy Senior High School is located in Quincy, which is 175 miles west of Champaign. Out of the backcourt with the ball. Douglas for Quincy. Flips it over to Rudd. 10-8 in favor of Quincy. Long range. Jump shot for two. by ball. In the corner. Douglas for Quincy. Back out to Ball. Back to Rudd. He's got four. He doesn't have a picture shot, but it's a soft shot. Keith Douglas, high arching. Boy, that is patient. 
31 and 0, the only unbeaten team in competition here in this final field of eight that started yesterday, the Quincy Blue Devils. And everywhere in Champaign-Urbana, you see bumper stickers that say, run, Devils run. Goodness, do they run. Their <laughs> shoes must be on fire. They are the quickest basketball team I think I've ever seen. Small, but boy, they are quick. Very unselfish, Tom. And uh, the darling of the tournament to date has been, again, another guard. Five foot eight, Mike Rudd. Jerry Leggett said, truly, he's not five eight. He just got his hair <laughs> pumped up a little bit. And he's five three, and they kind of <laughs> just tease it a little bit to make him think yeah. he's five eight. He had 19 yesterday. Yeah. That's how little he is. Well, he can penetrate. Uh, you know, they may beat that Bennett team down the floor, and if so, they're going to have a field day. If Bennett can set up in their tight zone, you know, that matchup zone that they got, uh, they could cause them a lot of trouble, even a guy like Mike Rudd. You got Keith Douglas, another uh, super basketball player in there. He's a little bit like Brian Officer, in my opinion. They have the same, uh, same style. Then, of course, they have the flamboyant uh, Jerry Leggett, and uh, needless to say, uh, I mean it nicely, he is a character. He is really worth the price of admission. Leggett on the sidelines, blue towel over his shoulder, uh, talking to one and all, coaching everybody in sight, and smiling to the crowd. He really is a pleasure to watch. He and has he, a and he said, no way time. his team can win the tournament. That's what he kept telling everybody that, and all he is is 31-0. and 0. And of course, uh, unbeaten teams have had a problem winning down here. That is, it's difficult to go through a season of top-flight basketball and stay unbeaten and culminate it with a state championship uh, game. But his team is 31-0, and they're just uh, a game away from playing for the big trophy tonight. We think it'll be an exciting game between Bennett Academy and Quincy Senior High, and we're glad you joined us. Jack, thank you for your comments. Well, it's about set um, game side. We'll have the opening lineups and get this one underway, so we'll go out there. Well, thank you very much, Tom. We are back at courtside now, and you hear the buzzer, and we're just about to have the opportunity of introducing the players for both of the teams, the coaches, the cheerleaders, and of course the referees who will be handling this ball game. There you see a shot of the court with them all the side. All on the sideline. That's the Quincy Ball Club who is 31 and 0. And now ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce to you the players for this second semifinal game for the 1979 Illinois High School Association Basketball Championships here at Champaign-Urbana. Now, here are the Quincy Blue Devil players. Number four, a senior, Steve Sandercock. Number 11, a sophomore, John Lepper. Number 13, a junior, Chuck Robinson. Number 21, sophomore, Mike Payne. 25, freshman, Bruce Douglas. Number 43, senior, Scott McGaffey. Number 45, a senior, Tim Sisna. And now the starting lineup for the Quincy Blue Devils. Number 15 and forward, 6'1", senior Steve Ball. Number 33, forward, 6'2", senior Keith Douglas. Center, number 35, 6'2", senior John Bloom. Number three at the guard, 5'7", senior Mike Rudd. At the guard, number 31, 5'10", senior Doug Reed. And the coach of the Quincy Blue Devils, Jerry Leggett. And here are the cheerleaders for the Quincy Blue Devils. Here are the Bennett Red Wing team members. Number 10, senior Pat Doyle. Number 20, junior Kevin Garvin. Number 24, junior Tom Connell. Number 34, junior Scott Shetler. 
Number 40, Junior Joe Lyons. Number 50, Junior Rob Slezak. Number 54, sophomore Ken Meyer. And now the starting lineup for the Bennett Red Wings. Number 44, at forward, 6'4", senior, Pat Odo. Number 30, at the forward, 6'4", senior, Sean Higgins. Number 52, at the center, 6'8", senior, Mike Lang. Number 12, at the guard, 6'0", senior, Kevin Conrad. Number 32, at the guard, 6'4", senior, Jim Bagley. And the coach of the Bennett Red Wings, William Geist. And now the cheerleaders for the Bennett Red Wings. And now here are the officials for this afternoon's second semifinal game, George Lux and Larry Nimmers. Well, there you have it. The players for both teams have been introduced. Once again, here are the starting lineups for Quincy, Steve Ball, Keith Douglas, John Bloom, Mike Rudd, Doug Reed, and you'll be looking at the fashionable Jerry Leggett quite a lot this afternoon, I'm sure. For the Bennett Red Wings, Pat Odo, Sean Higgins, Mike Lang, Kevin Conrad, Jim Bagley, and their coach is William Geist. And we're about to get underway, and here with the exciting play-by-play -play is Tom Kelly. Thank you, Floyd Brown. All right, center court, it'll be Lang against Bloom. Bloom outside, Megan Lang against Douglas, and Lang can pull the tip for Bennett. The ball goes over to Higgins, back out on top. Bagley with it now, Conrad, zone defense set up by the Blue Devils. That's about the quietest thing they do. In the middle of the line, turn around, two points. And Bennett Academy is on the board first, 2 nothing. Up out of the backcourt with the ball is Rudd, the diminutive but mighty good guard. In underneath, Bloom finds himself surrounded, turns for a moment wide open, shoots. The miss is rebounded and lost out of bounds by Odo. Well, the first time down, we saw an example, Tom, where if Bennett can set up, if they can get the ball across the line and set up against their zone, they're going to be awfully tough to stop. And I would imagine the big man, Lang, will be a most yeah. important item in this ball game if that comes to pass. Rudd shoots, misses, rebound is grabbed off by Ball, and he was fouled as he swung into the lane. And let's, the foul is going to be called. Let's watch the long, the long rebound come off, and you can see number 32, Bagley, over the back of Ball. Across the arms. Steve Ball at the line with an opportunity to get the ball game even. Ball at 15 points in Quincy's racehorse 75-62 win over Manley. I don't think we saw him miss three shots in a row last night, no. Rebound Lang of Bennett Academy. And in the backcourt, Conrad. The Lang over the timeline. So far, they've beaten that bonded press. Well, they're putting Lang up in the middle there and letting him handle the ball. And I guarantee you, Mike Rudd is not going to get it away from him. In the middle, Lang. Four to nothing. Bennett Academy. And the Benedictine Fathers behind us cheering their school and the team on. Rudd with the ball. Looks at that zone defense. In the corner to ball. Ball to the baseline. Fakes. Over the rim. Rebound is off. Grabbed by Conrad on the floor, nearly lost it, saved it over to Sean Higgins, and a foul is called on ball. Quincy 31 and 0, trying to win it all and become only the 10th team in Illinois high school basketball history to play an unbeaten, perfect season, culminating with a state championship. That includes a girls' team as well. Speaking of the ladies, next week, Right here at the assembly hall. Hope you'll join us. Under to Lang. Good fake. Blew it. Rebound is grabbed by Douglas. Here come the Devils. Douglas underneath is fouled, and the foul will be called on Conrad. 
Don't happen. forget, next Friday and Saturday, the 30th and 31st, the girls' basketball championships. Eight teams of very talented young ladies down here on Friday will be on hand. Hope you'll join us for the coverage. We think you'll like it. And Penstone will join us. Lloyd Brown. Hans basketball team lost a heartbreaker in sectional play. Four-pointer the other night. Shot from the side by Douglas. Rebound is off and grabbed by Conrad. And I tell you, for being no bigger than six feet, Conrad is mighty tough on the defensive board, Coach. Well, I, uh, his coach rates him among uh, one of the better guards in the state. Odo. Rebound. Douglas here. Come the devil. Down the court. Pass over to Rudd. Behind him, but the little guy runs it down. Four to nothing. Bennett leads. Ball to Rudd. 5.25 to go, first period. The winner plays Maine South for the title tonight. Matchup zone again by Bennett. Very tough to penetrate. In the middle, Douglas, surrounded, gets it up over Ryan and scores it. Four to two. Out of the backcourt, Conrad with the ball against that pressure. Zone A foul is going to be called. And Reed, who went high in the air and banged into Higgins. All right, on this uh, pressure defense, let's watch Doug Reed really gets aggressive here. Up in the air, Sean Higgins waiting for the ball. And needless to say, Doug Reed knocks him down. Reed is still a little bit woozy, but he's going to be all right. His coach, Bill Geist, was down there. The officials say, no, he's all right, coach. And uh, Higgins says he's all right, so... The action continues. Ball out of bounds to Bennett Academy. Conrad. Rebound underneath to Reed. There's the ball to Rudd. Down the right side. Douglas. Underneath the ball. Nice move. Beautiful move to the back. Four four. Boy, ball showed us a fine move to the bucket yeah. there. Conrad to inbound the ball. 446. Bagley in the backcourt. Still to Conrad. Long pass under for Higgins. Tapped away by Douglas. They say Higgins touched it last. It's out of bounds. It'll go to Quincy. Out of the ball game is uh, number 30, Higgins. And into the ball game is number 54, Ken Myers for Bennett Academy. They're in the white uniforms. Quincy in the blue. The Blue Devils with the ball. Tied at four. There in front is Reed. Throws it in from 25. Six to four. Quincy lead. Lang in the middle of the court with the ball to beat the press. Now that's what I think personally they should do. Get it to Lang. Get it across and then set up and power that ball into Lang. There, nobody can stop him. In the middle, Myers fouled by Rudd. That's Mike Rudd's first foul. All right, here's Meyer, just came into the game. And watch little Mike Rudd now doing the best he can, but there's no way he can stop Meyer. He tried. Two Meyer's shots. at the free throw line. He's six, eight and a half. It almost seems unfair to send him in, too. Very big team, Bennett Academy. Kid's only a sophomore. They're going to have big guys around forever, it seems. Six to five in favor of Quincy. Game tied. You missed that first game, you missed a thriller. 77-76 in overtime, Maine South over East Moline. It's really a shame somebody had to lose it. Douglas in the middle, foul on Myers, the basket will count. Well, Keith Douglas is an expert for his side. Look at him get position in there. Really spreads out. Then he powers up, and Ken Meyer, the sophomore, the big sophomore, across his wrist. Meyer's really got him twice, Coach. A hand in the middle of the back, and then he got him on the wrist going up. <laughs> he got to play in front of Douglas. No way you can play behind him, even if he's only 6'2". He had 22 last night. He's got five so far this afternoon. 9-6. Quincy leads Bennett. Lots of pressure. Nearly a steal. Maintaining possession, Bennett, Bagley, cross court to Odo, back to Bagley, Conrad, in the middle, turn around by Lang, 
He's got six. 9-8. Quincy leads by one. Blue Devils with the ball. Reed. Back out to Rudd against the zone set up by Bennett Academy. This Rudd's a pleasure to watch. The dandy little ball player. Reed. Rebound Lang. 40-foot pass. Conrad. Double team. Counter. Give Lang credit for seeing that uh, man down the floor. 10-9. Bennett leads by one. 3.05 to go. First period. Winner plays for the championship tonight. In the corner, Douglas. Starts up the baseline. And a foul will be called on Conrad. That'll be a second. I would imagine, Coach Burmaster, that Bagley at 6-4, not nearly as quick against the tough press. And if things get sticky in that regard, I think we'll see Doyle in there before very long. Oh, certainly, certainly. But they're handling, I think, the press quite well at this point. Inbound pass to Rudd. Down deep in the corner. Reed. You can hear the officials telling him, easy in the middle. Keep your hands off him. In the middle. Knocked away from Bloom. Scramble on the floor. Ball comes up with it. Quincy maintains possession. They're down by one. Ball in the middle. The basketball was kicked. It'll be out of bounds to Quincy. And here's Doyle up off the bench. He's scheduled to commit for Bennett Academy. Doyle in and Bagley out. If you want to say nice ball time or anything? <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. Yeah, you don't want to say a thing. No. All right. Inbound pass to Rudd. In the corner. Ball puts it on the floor. Batted away. Picks it up. Stolen by Conrad. Stolen back. No. Bennett's got it. Doyle has it. In the middle to Lang. Down the side. Out of bounds. Floyd Brown missed an opportunity to get it. It's going out of bounds to Bennett Academy. A big moment. Look at the coach. Jerry Leggett. <laughs> He's priceless. Priceless. He's got his latest Palm Beach threads on again today. There's Bill Geist, the Bennett Academy. I'd like to get a key to Leggett's closet. That man's got some threads, let me tell you. He's wearing his 5 Beta Kappa key today. Here he goes. On the side, Conrad decides he'll put it up. Why not? Can't give Conrad that uncontested shot. Too good 12, a shooter. 12 to 9, Bennett Academy. Douglas in the middle tried to get it back, and he was fouled, and the foul will be called on Odo. His first. Jerry Leggett right in front of us now talking to his young guard, Rudd. At the line, Douglas. There's Coach Leggett. Complete with the blue towel over his shoulder. He really is a delight. Crowd loves him. He's just, uh, he's very much involved in everything. For Douglas. That's his sixth point of the afternoon. 12 to 10. Bennett leading. Douglas had 22 last night. He's only 6'2", but he plays about a foot higher. 12 to 11. One point lead. Bennett Academy. Doyle flips it over to Conrad against the press. Back to Doyle. Over the timeline. Double teamed at the sideline. Trouble. Flips it over to Conrad. Good defense by Quincy. They are tough. Underneath. Shooting. Rolling it in. Fires. He's got four points, 14 to 11. Once Bennett Academy gets it down low, Quincy can't match up. They're too big in there. With Lang, Myers, Odo, much too big. Rebound, doubled up, Conrad. Actually, Doyle had it, flipped to Conrad, back to Doyle, in the middle to Lang. Hey, that's their safety valve right, right. there against that. The big man, 6'8", put him right there where it says the, the blue and orange eye, and he's got you right there with the basketball on the attack. Beats most presses around. They're going man-to-man -man now. Leggett just signal, uh, signaled man-to-man. Uh, -man. They came out, of the, came out of the zone. Back out to Lang. See how Bennett reacts to that man-to-man. -man. So far, they haven't done much moving him toward the bucket. Conrad down the right side. Now, baseline, nice move. Oh, nice move. He set to move. One the time, it didn't look like he was going that fast. Slipped it into overdrive. 16 to 11. Bennett. Ah, good move by Conrad. Reed in the corner to Douglas. Remember, Quincy's unbeaten. Trying to do it all. Very Leggett and company. Again, Douglas in the corner. Down by five. Baseline cut off. Back to Rudd. From 20. <laughs> two hands, too. <laughs> it is a two-head shot. Yeah. 
I don't think he's strong enough to get it up there one hand. <laughs> the two-hand set shot went out with Dyke Edelman. <laughs> I thought that just kiss it right off the forehead. My. Yeah. In the backcourt, high pass to Lang. He handles it. Back to Conrad. 16-13. Bennett with a lead and the ball. Stolen away. Foul will be called on right. Second. Five seconds remain in the first period. Young, uh, young lady came a long way to see this game. Her, her T-shirt said Tulane. <laughs> Probably came north for the nice weather. Huh? Odo will keep rubbing the, it in. Odo will inbound the ball in the middle to Lang. Turn around, rebound Douglas. Throws it 90 feet. Look out! Oh, he's about a foot away from the longest shot in state tournament history. Bennett 16, Christie 13. That's the end of the first quarter. All right, second period about to get underway. Bennett leads 16 to 13. Jack Burmaster says he's going to give us his number one cheerleading squad. The results of his own personal poll. Well, yeah, I've studied a long time on it, Tom. I've made up my mind. It is? Yeah, for this tournament. Quincy won Maine South too, but nobody will ever compare to the Galesburg Silver Streaks with their high yo silver. Remember? Him? <laughs> <laughs> Quincy shooting 62%, Bennett Academy 73. Bennett leads 16 to 13. Here we go with quarter number two. Winner into the championship game denied, and the tip controlled by Bennett. With it is Conrad. You know, I've been doing these games so long, Jack, <laughs> that every time I turn around, I see an old and familiar face and friend. And in the crowd is Jimmy Holmes. Shot taken, rebound, out of the end line, out of bounds, it'll go to Bennett. Jimmy Holmes, one of the great directors of this business, worked uh, for years and years and years on this tournament back in the days when Jack Rees and I used to broadcast it. And good to see him. He looks just super. He's up in the stands working in Chicago, of course. From the side, Conrad gets his eighth point of the ball game. 18-13, Bennett. Back in those days, Jimmy worked at WBKB, which is no longer even in existence, those call letters. The station's still there. Conrad's hit four of four. Here's Rudd, top of the key. Down by five. Quincy's got to get moving. Bruce Douglas, number 25, has got the ball. Newcomer in the game. Rebound in the corner. Taken in the air by Bagley. Flips it over to Conrad. And... Conrad trapped on the sidelines, back over to Bagley, looking for the big guy in the middle, all alone under his Odo. Odo gets the bucket and the foul on Douglas. All right, the uh, white team, Lyle Bennett, moved the ball around. They find Odo under the bucket, and you can see he is creamed by Bruce Douglas. Odo had 15 uh, check at eight points last night. He has two so far this afternoon. He's got three and has 21-13, an eight-point lead for Bennett Academy. Quincy unbeaten, 31-0. And their game slowed down considerably by a very tough zone defense and a very good offense that so far has resisted the pressing tactics of the Blue Devils. Mike Payne in the ball game for Quincy. He's wearing a blue number 21 jersey when you catch him next. Leading by eight. Underneath the Lang, all alone. No basket. Fouled before the shot. The foul on Payne. All right, once again, they're moving the ball, looking for the big guy inside. They finally hit him. He turns, pivots, but before he does, Mike Payne fouls. Say he's a hard man for the Blue Devils to stop inside. 6'8, must be 240, Tom. Well set up. Yeah, I mean, listen. the kid's got a nice physique on him and uh, an accomplished basketball player. That is point number seven for Lang. Bennett's got him playing their ball game. Yes, they have. No question about it. You speak of tempo and how you want to play, and believe me, Bennett has taken Quincy out of Quincy's type of game. Lang converts again. 23 13. 10 point lead Bennett. And uh, Jerry Legas going to have to get this Quincy club stirred up a little bit. Bruce Douglas in the corner. The ball to Douglas. The rush. 
to Douglas. In the corner of the ball. Look at that defense. Yeah. A tough zone. Two three. They get up by Bennett. Can't get the ball inside to a guy like Douglas. From the baseline, that's about as close as yeah. Pete Douglas has been. He's got a total of nine, 23, 15. Look out. Steal. Turnover. Rudd. All the way. That's what they've got to do. And he's fouled by Conrad. It amazes me how a guy that little can go into the land of the Giants and he doesn't hesitate, goes right to the basket. You're right. He doesn't hesitate at all. Watch Rudd again now. He's going to come up with the ball. There he goes into the bucket, doesn't stop at all, and Conrad over his shoulder. Basket's good, and he gets a foul shot. And the foul on Conrad is third. Timeout. Bennett, 23. Quincy, 17. The Quincy talks to his basketball team. Speaking of good coaches, Jack Burmaster and his coaches circle at halftime. He's going to be visiting with Bob Avery from Mattoon and Bruce Boyle, my old friend, coach of the Peoria Central Lions. Chance to visit with Bruce last night. He's looking good, although a little bit the worse for wear after East Moline took him out of it. He thought he might be down here. Thought he had a pretty good ball club. Rebound on the miss. Grabbed off by Higgins of Bennett Academy. To Bagley over cross court to Doyle. Conrad's out with three fouls now on the bench. Higgins in trouble. Trapped at the sidelines. Gives it to Lang. When in doubt, give it to the big guy, huh? to Doyle. Bennett Academy in the white trimmed in Cardinal and go. Lang. He is, they've collapsed so much on Lang. Oh. What a nice cut. He's got 10 points. 25-17. Bennett leading. Ball in the corner for Quincy. Into Douglas underneath and Lang got him over the shoulder before the shot. Jerry Leggett, the far side, top of your screen, Bill Geist. I'll tell you, I'd like to just spend about 30 or 40 minutes in Jerry's closet. He's got some duds, that rascal, huh? At the free throw line, Douglas, Keith Douglas, premier ball player. Rebound tipped back out to Pat Doyle. Doyle to Lang. Look at the big guy come out of the backcourt with it. He's in the wrong spot. All right, up to Florida Higgins. Over to Doyle. More than one way to beat the press, I guess, Coach. They're not fancy, but they're very sure in their ball handling. As sure team. as any team can be against a bunch of kids like that. In the corner, Higgins underneath at the baseline. Back out to Doyle. Black by Douglas. Black by Rod. Here come the Devils. Look at the little guy. Off the rim. Rebound. Douglas. Quincy has it. Baseline. Traveling. One step too many. Out of bounds. Bennett Academy. Boy, the officiating has been great in this basketball tournament so far. We've just had outstanding officiating. And I can't uh, say too many nice things about the guys in the striped shirts. It is an unenviable job, and they've done a magnificent bit of work down here. Again, I might add. Chuck Double Robinson team. came in for Douglas for the Blue Devils. On the side, Odo turns it over. is number 13 in the blue uniform of Quincy. And that's Bruce Douglas on the dribble. Cross court to Rudd. Rebound. Higgins. Bennett Academy. Over to Lang. Lang gives it to Bagley. Bagley to Doyle. Doyle to Bagley and he's over the timeline. Back to Doyle. Just a shade under four minutes left in the half. Bennett leading. 25-17. No basket. Foul in there on Douglas, and it'll be Lang going to the free throw line. Keith Douglas coming back in. Robinson goes out for Quincy. Well, it's been a great tournament so far. Semifinalists, I tell you, four great teams. Maine South with a one point win over East Molina. Just a great basketball game in overtime. Bagley in the corner, back out to Doyle. Winner of this one plays Maine South. 
underneath. Very smart play by Higgins. He had nowhere to go, so he turned and threw the ball right off Bloom's leg, and it's out of bounds, Bennett Academy. Heads up basketball. In the corner, Bagley. Yes, sir, I tell you, they're so worried about Lang and Higgins underneath. That defense has collapsed, and they're giving him the outside shots. Bennett is a good shooting team. From the side, shot is good by Ball. Foul on the play, the whistle. And a foul is going to be called on number 44, Otto. That's his second. And it's 27-19, and uh, it'll be Ball up the line trying to make it a three-point play. He's got four so far already. All right, let's watch Ball now. He's going to take the jumper. Odo comes over. You can see, did he block it? I think he just got a piece of his arm. The shot went in. That was a costly uh, foul. 27-20. Ten-point lead down to seven as Quincy refuses to go away and stays close to Bennett Academy. In the backcourt, Higgins. Bounce pass over the line to Bagley. Bennett Academy, man for man, probably the biggest ball club down here. Nice ball, good-looking team. Well school, fundamentally very sound. We got the big guy in the middle, Lang, out of the corner shooting, Bagley. Oh, Lang it on the rim and it fell back in. 29-20. Bennett by nine. Ball back out to Rudd. Shoves it in the middle to Douglas. Oh, beautiful move. And when they get the ball in low, they're in business. 29-22 as Douglas had turned around at the baseline. Now has 11 for the Blue Devils. But Bennett Academy continues to lead. Oh, traveling will be called on Bagley. Well, I know Bill Geist would like to uh, keep Conrad on the bench this first half. He does have three fouls. Right now, uh, Bagley and uh, Doyle are doing a good job. But if they get another basket in here, you might see Conrad come off that bench. Payne is in the game for Quincy, replacing Bloom. Here's Rudd. Top of the key to Bruce Douglas. Right side to Ball. Nearly stolen by Higgins. Back out on top to Douglas, and the Blue Devils will set it up again. They're down by seven, 29-22. Bennett Academy has been in front from the opening tip. Rudd underneath, out of the way, good defense. Odo, lead pass for Doyle on the break. 31-22, nine-point lead, Bennett Academy. Two minutes to go in the half. Rudd, top of the key, left side to Douglas. In the corner to Payne, back out to Douglas, looks in at Keith Douglas, to Judd. Right over to Ball, his shot is good. The foul on Higgins is first, and for Ball, seven points. All right, once again, uh, Ball has comes up with about a 25-footer, and as he shoots it, number 30, Sean Higgins fouls. So we'll have Ball up the line. He's got seven. He had 15 last night in the win over Manley. Odd thing about it, both shots have gone in. 31-25. So whenever Bennett Academy gets the impression they're going to run away by 10, 12, and hide, back come the Blue Devils, and now they're down by six. And full court pressure on the inbound pass. Odo in the backcourt. Back to Lang. Lang. Double team, fires a long one in the corner to Bagley. Bagley back out on the left side to Pat Doyle. A minute 30 to go. Over to Odo, to Doyle. Bennett up by six. Jerry Leggett just single man-to-man uh, -man again. Lang near midcourt holding it, flips it over to Bagley. He goes man-to-man -man when it's obvious the Bennett team is stalling for the last shot. Lang starts at the dribble, then stops. Fires it cross court to Odo. Odo's a big kid, 6'4", strong. Odo says, come here, somebody. Over to Bagley. Bagley and Reed. Little one-on-one. -on -one. Bagley back out to Doyle. Less than a minute, 50 seconds. First half, nearly history. Steal by Rudd. Saved by Doyle. down the left side and run right with him every step of the way. Doyle needs help over to Bagley. Double team. Bagley in the middle to Lang. Left side to Doyle. To Higgins. Baseline. Underneath. Thrown it away by Reed. Out of bounds. 
Winston. There's some happy faces in the stands. Those are all number one shirts, they say. Bennett of Lyle, number one. Bennett of Lyle, number one. What a great crowd we've got here today. And are they involved? They saw corking good opening semifinal game. Reed. Out of bounds with seven seconds to go, and Bennett Academy will have it. Main South over East Boline, 77-76 in overtime. Lang over the timeline, three seconds. Higgins out of here. No doubt about it. Here it is again. There's Lang. Higgins now will get the ball, and the guy from the side, Jumper. The gun goes off. The ball goes through. 33-25. Bennett at halftime. Here's Jack Furmaster. Tom, I think a lot of people are surprised so far. 33 to 25 at half. Uh, everybody's surprised that is, but the supporters of Bennett Academy. Bill Geist is doing it again. A masterful coaching job. He's uh, he's got some super talent on this ball club, but he's got uh, he's got Quincy playing his ball game. To date, they've solved the zone press. Uh, they're getting the ball in to Mike Lang. Lang's turning around, doing a good job. In turn, Bennett is uh, using their uh, zone defense very effectively. Now let's go to Floyd Brown in Tournament Central. Thanks, Jack. Right now, Tom Kelly is going over his scorebook, and he'll have a summary for you on the first half, just as soon as he verifies a couple of the stats. Our coverage from Champaign-Urbana will continue after this. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago. Well, the tall and talented Bennett Academy basketball team has taken some out of the run, out of the run devil's run of Quincy. Although we've only played 16 minutes of basketball, Bennett Academy has been in front, leading 16-13 at the end of the first period. And they're up by 33-25 here at the intermission. They did have a lead of 10 points, but every time they got to around 10, 11, or 12, why the Quincy Blue Devils had come storming back at him and narrowed the margin again. So Quincy is far from out of this basketball game, although Bennett does appear to have that Quincy press beaten so far and their tall and talented front line having a pretty good time for themselves underneath the basket. We'll run down the scoring. Pat Odo's got three points for Bennett Academy, two for Sean Higgins. Mike Lang, the big guy in the middle, has got ten. Eight points to Kevin Conrad, but Conrad has three personal fouls and that could be a problem. Jim Bagley's got four, Ken Myers has got four, and Pat Doyle, who's done an excellent job coming off the bench as the sixth man, has picked up two points. For the Quincy Blue Devils, Steve Ball has eight points. Keith Douglas, boy, what a fine basketball player. He had 22 last night. He's got 11 this afternoon. Mike Rudd has four. He had 19 last night. He's going to have to get up and move his game a little bit. And Doug Reed has got two points here at the end of the first half. Shooting has been pretty good, at least for Bennett Academy. 70%, they've hit 14 of 20. Quincy's doing very well, but not nearly enough. 52% on 10 of 19. Halftime, and Bennett Academy is leading 33 to 25. Now let's swing over to Jack Burmaster. Got a couple of coaching associates with him, and we'll find out what they've got to say about the game and the games so far. Jack, it's yours. Okay, thanks, Tom. Back to the coaches' circle. With me uh, this afternoon, Bob Avery on my far left, coach of Mattoon High School, a member of the Big 12 Conference. Bob, you've been there for 10 years. On my immediate left, Bruce Boyle. Everybody knows Bruce. He won the championship in 1977. We've had you on the tube before, Bruce. Uh, this year, uh, tough luck. Uh, East Moline, I believe, knocked you out in the super sectional. Let's start with you, Bruce. What about this ball game we're seeing right now? Does it surprise you? Well, and to a certain extent, it does, Jack. I thought uh, Quincy would force a few more turnovers than they have so far. Uh, They've uh, had a little problem with their press, and they've had a little problem keeping the ball on the inside of the big kid from uh, Lyle. And I think uh, Jerry's going to have to make some adjustments. I sure, I'm sure he will at halftime to uh, try to force a few more turnovers, keep the ball away from the big kid. Bob, that matchup zone that everybody is talking about looks tough to work against. That's I've been out of coaching so long, I wouldn't know how to go against it. What do you do against that thing? Well, I, uh, I'm not sure anybody really knows anymore. You can't plan anything. I think you have to get the defense moving in a certain way and move it, move the ball the opposite way and uh, pick the open spot. I, I think off defenses have forced this considerably, and uh, there's no set way you can do anything twice down the floor, it seems like. All right, if you are uh, 
the Quincy coach, Jerry Leggett, at halftime. I know he's uh, down a little bit and the kids are down. Well, I shouldn't say that. Leggett is never down, but the kids oh. are a little bit down. What would you do for this ball club at halftime, knowing that it's for all the marbles? Well, certainly it, it presses his strength, and it's, it's got to do something for him, as Bruce just mentioned, a lot more than it has. Uh, maybe get uh, Douglas a few more shots if he can do it. And he plays inside and out. Maybe you have to get him out a little bit more to get it. But those are the things that have to start going. He might as well go all out because he didn't make the lose. It appears as though they want to get the ball to Douglas but can't do it, and he is moving out farther and further. Bruce, uh, what would you do? How about if you were uh, Geist uh, sitting on a nice lead? Uh, well, they've, they've, they've done a fine job of uh, taking time on offense, having some patience, working the ball, setting up a little triangle where Quincy's uh, trying to drop a man in front and a man behind the big kid. And uh, before long, they, they, they give the baseline man an open shot, and uh, Ben has been taking advantage of, of that situation. And uh, I think right now, they're sitting in a pretty good situation if they can just continue to play the way they have. All right, uh, we put everybody else on the spot quickly. Uh, how are you predicting the outcome of the game, Bob? Well, I'll have to say I'm a sentimental favorite for Quincy because it's south. Of, <laughs> okay. South, and I, uh, I like to see them come through. All right, Bruce? Well, I think it's going to go right down to the wire. I think Jerry will get his kids fired up, and uh, I think they'll force be more turnovers. And I think it'll go right down to the wire. But who's going to win? But no prediction. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being with us, gentlemen, and also thanks for your comments. The intermission clock indicates we should be assembling for our coverage team at courtside. Let's go now to courtside for the rest of the ballgame. We'll give you an opportunity to see that last shot here just before the end of the half. Here you'll see Higgins with the ball going down. There's the pass going over to Higgins. Higgins got the shot off the last. The Shot going up. Look at the clock. One second in the air. It goes off just as it hits, and that goes through, and it's good. Good camera work here. It was just outstanding. Fans, don't forget to join us tonight at 7 for the championship round of the 1979 Illinois High School Association Basketball Tournament. That's 7 o'clock on all of these same channels. Be sure to tune in. Well, we have an exciting game here, the second of the two semifinal games. The winner of this one will advance to the championship game tonight, which will be our second game here tonight. Bennett Academy leading at this point by a score of 33 to 25 of a very quick Quincy ball club, but they haven't been able to uh, get over the very fine zone that has been put up by Bennett, who also has done an excellent job of handling the ball when they've been on offense. Just too much height for them here in the first half. It'll be interesting to see what Jerry Leggett, the coach of these Quincy Blue Devils, does as they start the second half of play. They're walking out to the center of the court. The Bennett team from Lyle, Illinois, the Red Wings, have now finished their huddle, and they're coming out to the center down, of the court as we prepare to get underway here in the AK second half skin. of play. Semifinals, 1979 Illinois Green High School team. Association Green. Championship Off. Basketball. And here to bring you the exciting activity during the second half is your play-by-play -play announcer, Tom Kelly. Keith Douglas for Quincy's Blue Devils against Big Mike Lang of Bennett Academy. Center court, Bennett up by eight points. And the Red Wings have the ball. Lang on the side to Doyle. From out of the corner, the miss by Bagley. Rebound Keith Douglas. Here come the Blue Devils. Bounce pass. Underneath the Reed, put to hang on. The ball belongs to Bennett as Doyle picked it up. Double team trapped over the timeline. The big man Higgins goes down. Chasing it was Bagley. The ball is saved by Rudd, and Douglas brings it up the floor for Quincy. In the middle, Douglas fouled from behind by Pat Doyle. For Doyle, his first. Well, after all that activity up and down the uh, court, Douglas finally gets position. He turns, wheels, and the smallest guy on the floor, probably other than Rudd, Pat Doyle fouls. Nobody's smaller than Rudd. 
don't tell that to Rudd. Rudd thinks he's 6'8". <laughs> he plays like it, too. Keith Douglas with 11 first-half points at the line for Quincy. 33, 26. Bennett Academy leading. But you see the Bennett Academy bench from time to time. Douglas gets another. The priest is the Reverend Ronald Rogowski. He's the principal of uh, Bennett Academy of Lyle, Illinois. 33, 27, six point lead. Bennett in the corner, Bagley, back out to Doyle. Odo, Doyle, whistle away from the ball, and a foul will be called on Douglas, pushing off in the middle, that's only his first. Well, the Blue Devils are back in that tight zone defense again, almost daring. Uh, the Bennett Academy team to shoot from the corners. All right, inbounding it is Bagley, all the way out on top to Doyle. Lob back under to Bagley. Nice move. Heartbreak shot. Rebound tipped to Rudd. Here come the Blue Devils. Rudd in the corner to Bloom. Bloom looking underneath, finds Douglas. Turn around, block. Douglas gets it back. If at first you don't succeed. Look at those kids. Oh, what a mad scramble for the ball. And Lang comes up with it out of that wild melee underneath the bucket. Boy, hustle is just commonplace. Everybody's scrapping for the ball. Gonna have a jump ball. No, turn it over. He didn't get it out of the backcourt. Ten seconds. There's the principal at Bennett Academy. That's uh, the Reverend Ronald Rogowski, Benedictine father. Ball from the side. Oh, in and out. Foul on Bloom underneath. That's a heartbreak. Not only didn't you get the points, but one of your men comes up with a foul, Bloom. And There's another player I like in this tournament we haven't said much about. Number 35 out there in the blue, John Bloom. He had eight points last night, Coach. He's a scoreless so far today. Good hard work. Oh, very much so. Only 6-2, and he's in there with a field of tall timber. <laughs> Bennett. Mike Lang pinched in there, and Bloom gets another foul. That's two in a row now. Jerry Leggett is up. There he goes. 1-4, he says. 1-4? Looks to me like a man-to-man, -man -to -man, whatever it is. No, they're back. Oh, they're in a four there yeah. with a maybe one out front chasing the ball. Bagley. In the corner to Odo. Baseline jumper. Rebound grabbed by Bruce Douglas. Clears it to Rudd. The Blue Devils down the sideline. Back out on top to Douglas. Rudd out of the corner. Oh. <laughs> 33 29. Checking in will be Conrad. Next time the ball is dead, which might be right now. And he comes. Conrad's got three fouls. Bagley, no. Doyle is coming up. Pat played a nice game out yes, there. Yes, he did. A very fine sixth man coming yeah. off that bench. Yeah, he and Myers really give Geist uh, seven men. Interchangeable. That's a nice team. Bagley down the right side to Higgins. In the middle to Lang. Back to Bagley. Zone defense by the Blue Devils of Quincy. They've crept within four. Odo. Back out to Conrad. Here's another look at it as our camera at floor level watches Odo with the ball. Back out to Conrad. You think it's easy to move that basketball around? That gives you an idea of how it looks when you're out there. Underneath, Higgins in the corner. Odo back out on top. There's Lang underneath to Odo. Rebound tipped by Bloom. Picked off by Rudd. Here come the Blue Devils. Rudd's pass slapped away. Steal by Conrad. Three on two, and Conrad turns it away. Brings it back outside, waiting for the rest of the club, and Lang comes into your picture now. Well, when you're 6'8 and weigh over 200 pounds, and you've been going 95 feet back and forth, <laughs> you deserve to walk about 10, don't you? At From least. time to time. <laughs> Conrad, oh, he almost did everything but shoot it, didn't he? That, that was a pass, tipped up and almost went in. That's how close I, these guys are. They're converging so much. I think that uh, Lyle has got to take a couple shots. They've got some awfully good shooters. Ball 
misses. Rebound line. Clears it at midcourt to Conrad. One on one. Conrad and Rudd. Nice move by Conrad. Oh, beautiful. Conrad will be taken by Quincy. Four minutes to go. Third period. Bennett, 35. Quincy, 29. Resume action with four minutes to go here in the third period. In case you missed our first semifinal, shame on you. You missed a crackerjack of a basketball game. 77 76, Main South over East Moline in overtime. It was a dandy. So, Main South is in the title game tonight against the winner of this game, Quincy, unbeaten, 31 0, trying to move to the finals. Bennett Academy has been very tough. A big zone defense set up now against the Blue Devils. Rod lobs under to Douglas. Ooh. Thirty-five, thirty-one. Foul on Bloom. That is his second. Make it his third. All right, let's watch this lob. Mike Rudd, perfect pass inside, and you can see number thirty-three, Keith Douglas. Great timing. Payne is coming into the game for Quincy, and Bloom is going out. Academy Conrad in the backcourt troubled. Foul will be called on Payne. He has two. At the line, Conrad to shoot the one and one. Has 11 points. 36-31. Bennett Academy leading Quincy. <laughs> 37, six-point lead. Bennett Academy, 3.30 to go in the third period. Run right in the corner, back out to Bruce Douglas. Whistle, foul away from the ball. And that'll be against Lang. I think they got it on Meyer, did they? They did. Yeah. It is Myers. And Meyer, that's two against Bennett. Lang is out of the ball game now, getting a rest. Myers replaced him. Inbound pass to Payne. Nice mm. turnaround. 37-33. Bennett leads by four. Double team. Conrad. Yeah. Pressure defense got to him that time. Double teamed. He had no place to uh, go with the ball. Conrad dragged his foot, and here comes the big guy. Lang coming back in the game. They'll put him right at the middle, Coach. Higgins comes out. It'll be two dribbles and hit the big guy right at the midcourt <laughs> line now. On the side, ball. Rebound. Tipped over the rim. Rebound, Myers. Boy, I tell you, Douglas got up about as high as you can go without oxygen. Down the side, in the corner with it is Odo. Back out on top. Conrad fakes in the lane. Shovels it up. Rebound, Odo. Whistle on the play. Let's see, no basket. Foul in the middle, I think, will be on ball, but we'll wait and see. No, nope. going to be on number 33, Douglas, his second. The look on Ball's face was either one of unhappiness about being called for the foul or joy that they didn't find him out. He thought he had it. Conrad's attempt gives him 13 points. Bennett leads by five at 38-33. Point intent on the outcome. A face in the crowd. 39. Six-point lead for Bennett. Quincy with the ball. 2.49 to go, third period. The winner plays Main South for the big trophy tonight. Oh, heartbreak. Tip on the follow. Keith Douglas. After Bruce Douglas missed it, Keith tipped it in. 39-35. Lying in the middle. Over to Conrad. Picked away underneath by Payne. Out of bounds, Bennett. That's 
say right now, Tom, the momentum is uh, on the Blue Devil side, wouldn't you? It just seem to be playing with a little more intensity right now than Bennett. There's a real fan keeping score. Conrad. Rebound to Conrad. What a guard. What a guard. Got to be one of the best in the state. 41-35 as Conrad gets his follow and puts it in. Rebound fell right to him. Although he had to be there looking for it to get it, didn't he? Douglas on top to Rudd. Right side the ball. Back to Rudd in the middle to Keith Douglas. Picked away the out-of-bounds Quincy. Lucky move for Quincy that the ball was kicked when it hit the floor. Because Bennett Academy was about to bring it back up in play. Inbound past him. Douglas, what a great move. 41-37. Jackie does that with such great hang time as yeah. well as anybody I've seen. He's only 6-2. And that was a set play from out of bounds, too. Loud is called on Bruce Douglas, his third. Bennett Academy cheerleaders and our camera in the stands is back up there a ways looking down now at the game. When this ball game is over, and when you look in this afternoon and tonight, you'll see the names of just a handful of the people that put this tournament telecast on. Lying at the free throw line. Rebounded to Douglas. Accomplished professionals, all of them. And I can tell you, it is a real pleasure to work with them. They're a great crew. And a lot of names you won't hear mentioned or won't see. But believe me. Paul hits it from long range. He's got 10, 41, 39. Bennett leads by two. And Quincy's coming on. Steal by Rudd. Against Lang. Rudd goes in. No whistle. <laughs> he wanted a foul there. Each coach wanted a foul. <laughs> Let me tell you, Geist thought his man was charged, and Leggett thought his man had been blocked. I think Larry Nemers made the right call. Don't call anything on that one. I'll tell you, that little Rudd, he doesn't have to ever have a job. He could be a professional pickpocket. <laughs> Beautiful going for the last shot, Bennett. 37 seconds. That's all that's left in the third period in a two-point game. The winner plays for the big trophy tonight. Maine South is waiting. Conrad's going to take this last shot, I have a feeling. Going to give it to Conrad, are you? I think I would, yeah. 20 seconds. We're going to show you again that the drive on the bucket by Rudd and the defense by Lang before we leave you at the end of the third period. It's worth looking at again. It's a beauty. Well, Conrad's got six, five. He's in the air with it. Tough shot. Here's Rudd. 30. Oh! <laughs> Nailed the front of the rim from about 60 feet. It's over the third quarter. Watch Rudd again now on the drive against Lang. Watch it. There he goes. Who charged what? <laughs> Who blocked whom? Third period's over. Bennett 41, Quincy 39. So there you have Jerry Leggett, the coach from Quincy. 31 and 0. Look at him. You notice Jerry doesn't use that towels for the players. He puts it on the floor. He doesn't want to get his suit dirty. I don't blame him. <laughs> Did you see the intensity of the man? Yeah. As he turned away from his team, the clenched fist, <laughs> as if he were giving himself a pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it'll be Big Mike Lang against Keith Douglas. Quincy shooting 50%. Bennett oh, 50. Yeah. Douglas gets yeah. it. Hold it. Yeah, Douglas. Well, Douglas went up with the ball. Yeah. All right. Out of bounds. It'll go to Bennett. Conrad, no. We'll have uh, Bagley to inbound the ball. Midcourt line to Conrad. Boy, these are four fine semifinal teams. Underneath. Beautiful pass. Lang hits Higgins. Higgins has got four points, and it's 43-39. Bennett Academy leads Quincy. They've led the entire basketball game. Still in that matchup zone, still trying to get the ball in as best they can to Payne or Keith Douglas. Baseline Douglas, Quincy, down by four. Baseline Payne, shot blocked by Lang, grabbed by Higgins, and Conrad has the ball for Bennett Academy. The Red Wings are dancing behind us.
14,530 the paid attendance for this afternoon session of semifinal ball in this double A tournament and believe me they have been two of the very best games I've had the pleasure to see in many many years here at Champaign. Conrad 18 points 45 39 Bennett ups its lead to six points now. Quincy had pulled within two. Two fourth quarter buckets to open up this stanza. And Bennett widens its margin. Douglas in the corner to ball to Douglas. Tough zone defense by the Red Wings. Rudd. Rebound. Payne tips it to Keith Douglas. Baseline. Jumper. Yes, sir. 21 for Douglas. 45-41. There's Bill Geist, coach of Bennett Academy. Payne. Hey, Bill Geis, a super nice guy, too. Very modest. With the ball, Conrad back out to Lang to Conrad. Quincy in the zone as well, trying to diminish the effect of that big line of Bennett Academy. Shot, tipped away, scrambled in the corner, saved by ball of Quincy. Six minutes to go in the game. Douglas in the corner to Keith Douglas. Back out to Bruce. Looks in at Payne, looks it back to Rudd. In the middle, Keith Douglas, partially deflected. Underneath, Bruce Douglas didn't save it. Yes, out of bounds, it'll go to Quincy. Coach Geist unhappy about the call. There's Bill. Now the look on his face told you what he was thinking. Have a away from the bucket apparently Keith Douglas going out Robinson coming in for Quincy Foul is going to be called on Odo number 44 his third Bennett Academy leading by four at 45 41 they led by three at the first period by eight at halftime by two at the end of three quarters take a look at the official bench there's a very pretty lady. That's Carol Kaiser from Chicago. Northbrook, I think. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. In the corner, Bloom. Underneath, Bruce Douglas has it batted away and stolen by Conrad. Boy, I tell you, Conrad is as tough as nails. He gets it back. What a scramble. Intercepted. Beautiful. Picked off by Quincy. Ball in the corner to Rudd. He's got it. Oh, boy. Unbelievable action, Tom. You can hardly describe that kind of action. Oh, the picture tells the story. What a beautiful basketball game. Bagley over the timeline. Double teamed at the sidelines. Whistle. Foul is going to be called on Douglas. That'll be his fourth. Keith Douglas comes in for Robinson. I tell you, Jack Burmaster, these are four of the best semifinal teams I've seen. Outstanding. All right, timeout, 4.59 to go. Bennett, 45, Quincy, 43. His team has been in front the entire game. They lead by two. At the free throw line will be Bagley. Here come the Blue Devils. Smaller, quicker. I tell you, you go to measure the heart of these kids. They're all giant size. The winner goes to the championship tonight. Bagley's got five. 46-43. Bennett Academy continues to hang on. 47. Rudd out of the backcourt over to Douglas in the corner to Rudd left side to Douglas in the corner to ball underneath turn around Steve Douglas Keith Douglas beautiful turn around he's got 23 47 45 Lang in the backcourt flips it over to Conrad over the line to Bagley beating the clock Conrad Conrad has got a total of 18 points. The little guard in the middle to Lang. Poked away. 
field. Douglas on the break. Bruce Douglas gets his first basket. Game is tied at 47. Foul is called on ball in the backcourt. 4-11 to go, and we're tied at 47, and Quincy has caught Bennett Academy. Well, Quincy keeps uh, daring uh, Bennett's outside men to shoot, and uh, they're trying to work that ball in, which worked well the first half, but I think Conrad's got to open him up and pop. He's only got about an 18-footer, and he is an expert shooter, I think. The rebound is grabbed by Bruce Douglas. Quincy has a chance to go on top for the first time in the ball game. Jerry Leggett patting the top of his head. What does that mean, Coach? I think That's he's going to spread it out now. Delay. Going to spread it out. That means a tie score. The defense has got to come out. Rudd holds it near midcourt. You see the official waving his hand. That's a count. On the side to Bloom. Back out on top to Rudd. Penetrates. And down the side to Bloom. Back out to Rudd. 3.34 to go. Game tied at 47. Remember the opening semifinal game went to an overtime with Maine South winning 77-76 over East Moline. Keith Douglas on the side. Ball. Quincy leads for the first time in this basketball game. 49-47. Inbound pass to Bagley. Cross court. Steal. Douglas steals it to Rudd. Whistle. The official blew the whistle. And a timeout is being taken by whom? The ball will go to Bennett Academy. Bill Geist wants a timeout. I don't know what that was all about. I don't either. Quincy leads by two. 49-47 for the first time in the ball game, and Jerry Leggett is asking the official, how can you call time when my ball club has the ball? We'll be back as Bennett looks on anxious now. And Let me clear up that last bit of business for you. A shot was taken by Quincy. As the ball was rebounded, Bennett Academy had the ball, and a whistle was blown. It was an inadvertent whistle. Now, Jerry Leggett thought his team had a chance for the ball. There's Coach Leggett of Quincy. But in point of fact, there was no harm done. Bennett Academy had indeed rebounded the missed shot. And so here we are with Quincy leading 49-47. And Bennett Academy has the ball, 2.46 to go. The winner plays for the title tonight against Maine South. And I tell you, I don't know if either one of them, Maine South or this winner, will have anything left. But I hope you'll be here for it. Beautiful drive by Conrad. He's got 20. Game tied again at 49. When Quincy went in front, it was the only time in this game that the Blue Devils had led. Douglas, what a player. Once again, Back out to Douglas. Go ahead, Jack. They're going to go into the delay. Score is tied. Going to force Bennett to come out of that tight zone. Bruce uh, Douglas over to Rudd. You can bet your life if there's an opening, Quincy will go to the bucket. They are not going to completely stall if they have that opportunity. Keith Douglas back out to Bruce, cross court to Rudd. I tell you, that bounce pass is dangerous with the guys with arms as long as Lang out there. Look where Lang is playing in that zone, way out at the point. Our director, Arnie, has dropped uh, that clock in for you to watch. I wanted to tell you how much time is left. It's right there in front of you. Underneath, whistle, we've got a foul on Conrad. His fourth. You know, Kevin Conrad had three fouls in the first half. And he's played remarkably fine basketball. The Blue Devils. Go, Devils, go. We're number one, they say. Well, Bennett says it's number one. And to be decided tonight, number one in the state, well, Maine South might have some claims to that. They're already locked in for the championship game. 14,000 and more here this afternoon for this session. And as fine a semifinal round of basketball as I've had the pleasure to see. Down the side to ball, back out to Bruce Douglas. Looks it at Keith. Down to ball, back to Bruce. Now there's something wrong with that shot because we've got a minute 10 on the scoreboard out here. Minute eight. 
57. The clocks do not. The clocks are not going the same. Across the way it says 104. This one says 54. 104 and 54. I don't know which one you can believe. Now you see 104. And Arnie Harris, our director, had punched up the one above us on the scoreboard that shows 54. Officials time out. The clock at the top is the official time. 54 seconds will be the official time. That's the one high above the floor here at the assembly hall. That's going to be the official time, but now they're setting it to 50. Hold it. They're going to have to reset it, I think. Now the clock across the way on the side wall is at 52. Now they're going to have to set them both. Well, tonight it'll be Maine South for the title against the winner here. And in that first game, it'll be East Moline against the loser here. All right, timeout. We'll be back right now, 49-49. Don't go too far away. Viewers, the sponsors are glad to be able to bring you these tournament games on television. We'd like to hear from you about the coverage. We're sure your thoughts and comments will prove very helpful in the future. Would you drop us a card or a letter? There's the address. Basketball, Box 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Basketball 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. The band has got it. Jack Burmaster, Jerry Leggett with chalk in hand. Diagram this for you. <laughs> well, I can't uh, quite figure Jerry's uh, hieroglyphics. Oh, he's going to move his hand a little bit for I you now. He's so. talking offense or defense in there. It looks like he's uh, figuring on a little offensive maneuver here to overload against this uh, zone defense at Bennett Academy. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get a little uh, pop shot from. Uh, along the baseline someplace and if the game goes right down to the last second. Tonight at 7, we'll open up with the battle for third place. That'll be East Moline against the loser here. And then following that, the championship game to determine who is number one in the state of Illinois. Maine South is qualified against this winner, whoever it's going to be. Quincy with the ball. Game tied at 49 and 54 seconds to go. Douglas has it against Lang. On the side to Bloom, back out to Douglas. 46 seconds. Thank you, Arnie. Red with the ball. Keith Douglas. Quincy, 31 and 0. Can they win this? Can they win the tournament? Can they be number 10 in all of Illinois high school basketball to go through unbeaten, untied, unsullied, and a champion? Yeah, we'll see. And they're reading it down. If they can't get it inside, it might boil right down to little Mike Rudd, number three with the ball, taking the last shot. Over to Douglas, 13 seconds. Jerry Leggett is up. Keith Douglas driving. Timeout, eight seconds. Quincy will set it up for the last play. What a game. Trailing the entire ball game. Quincy goes on top, 49-47. Bennett Academy ties it. Quincy's got the ball. And Jerry Leggett down on his knees in there diagramming this one last shot. Well, Jack, you've been there. You won it in 69 with a great basketball team from Evanston. Did you ever, I don't remember you getting down on your knees and having to do that. You, well, I didn't huh? know much about those X's and O's. <laughs> but, uh, I'll tell you, it's going to be interesting to see what Jerry does with the ball. Eight seconds to go. Well, now it looks to uh, me like that's the inbound. The man is going to come to the backcourt to get it. Well, uh, yeah, he may. Or at least they're going to come back be this way with him. And he wants to make sure if he gets it, I'm sure that he gets it way in the backcourt. You don't want to flirt around with his 10-second line. All right, he's going to go in the middle, and the guy's going to swing off the baseline, get the screen, and put it up from the left side about six feet away. But if, if he gets what he wants. All right, we'll see, Tom. I'm, I, uh, I think that the guy, uh, Keith Douglas, is going to wind up here as the hero of this ball game. Listen to this crowd. Listen to that Quincy fan. Oh, are they up? 
You know, it might even boil down to a last second lob shot or a lob pass to a guy like Douglas. Watch him set up All and right. watch Ball now come off the baseline and set a screen. Here it comes to Ball for the shot. Rebound, we're going, no, one second left. One second left. Timeout, Bennett Academy. We may be in an overtime. Tom, you should have been a coach. That, well, I'll that tell you, great. that was great. Let me tell you, Jack, that this would be the second overtime game if Bennett doesn't do something in the one second they've got left of this semifinal session. I can't tell you what good basketball this is. And good Outstanding. Coaching. Outstanding. There's some fine coaches down here. Oh. The thing is, there's a lot of fine coaches in this state that have never been to the state tournament. You know, you got to be lucky as well. Oh, no to, question about it. Talent. Have to be very lucky. Let's take a look again. Right, here coach. we go. Into number 25. That's over Douglas. To Douglas. All right, he reverses the ball. You're right, number 15, Steve Ball, with a little 25-footer. Came up. Rolled off the baseline up there. Now there's Bill Geist. He's got a second left. But the ball's going to be in the backcourt, yeah. Coach. And he's got 95 feet to go. Well, I guess uh, I would try to throw it down to the big guy, uh, Lang. However, Lang has to be careful in going up that he doesn't foul. Or get fouled. So Quincy must guard against it as well. Bear in mind that that one second, the clock will not move until the ball is touched in play. Well, it's, uh, he's got the big guy, uh, number 44, Pat Odo. He's probably going to throw it all the way down the floor. I don't see how he can throw it in here. Oh, well, I think he's got it. Well, he's got yeah. it. All right. Uh, no what an 80-footer. Oh, boy. Yeah, Let he, me tell you, Bagley didn't miss that by about two feet. He was though. on target. Oh, we're going to overtime. Aren't you glad you looked in? Bennett, 49. Quincy, 49. What do you want to do with it, Darrell? Keep it here? All right, fine. Don't forget there'll be more of the same tonight. 7 o'clock, the loser of this game. And isn't it a shame one of them has to go away, a loser? And East Moline, a loser in overtime this afternoon to Maine South. They'll go in the 7 o'clock game. Following that, the championship game with the two winners. I tell you, this has been as fine an afternoon of semifinal competition as I've had the pleasure of seeing here at Champaign-Urbana. Bill Geist, his team has been in front the entire game. They fell behind 49-47, tied it. Each team has had one last second shot, so to speak, at winning it. And now we're going to three minutes of overtime. All right, one of the important things here now is going to be this opening tip of the second half. And there's a lot of pressure on the game official throwing that ball up. I believe it'll be a George Lux throwing the ball. It's got to be a good toss. You know that tell you about the officials. You bring to mind a point. You remember that inadvertent whistle I yes. referred to a moment ago? George Lux came over while they had a timeout to tell us that's what it was. Now, I tell you, it takes a big man to admit that he inadvertently blew the whistle. And as we reported to you, there was no harm done because Quincy indeed did have a chance to shoot the ball, which they did. And Bennett Academy did rebound it. They had possession. All right, let's see who gets the this opening man. tip. Tonight, the battle for third place at seven, the title game to follow that. Here we go to overtime. Lying against Keith Douglas to start three minutes of extra competition. Talk about getting your money's worth. What a great afternoon of basketball. Big advantage to whatever team controls this tip. Boy, are they anxious? Look at them. Lang tips it in the backcourt to Bagley. Over to Conrad. Conrad playing with four fouls now. And remember, that could be an important item. He's most important to this Bennett basketball team. Same thing. They're just trying to overload a side. Look how they sink back, protecting the middle against Big Mike Lang. Again, daring Odo in the right corner to shoot the ball. In the first semifinal game, the two teams were tied at 72. Here they are tied at 49. You know, when you wait that long, you lose your rhythm. Let me correct myself, Jack. They were tied at 70 in that first overtime game at the end of regulation play. Tied at 70. And Maine South went on and scored seven points while East Moline got six. Well, they're going to hold it for three, little, do you think, little, Coach? Yeah, little cat dog here. Lang 
skips it back out to Conrad. They're so packed around Lang, he has to be careful of charging in the middle. That's it. Oh, in the middle to Higgins. Ooh. Now I think they have Conrad in the right spot. I'd move Conrad right down toward that baseline. Would you? Sure. You mean for the shot or yeah. for a pass underneath or what? Oh, right on that baseline. 18 footer, not even that. I tell you, I think Conrad's in range now if he wanted to. Oh, there he sure. goes. He's going under. Comes out the other side. I don't know. I wouldn't mess around inside. They're gonna they're gonna sink back that far. I just play for the last shot. This is overtime, tied at 49. Thank you, Arnie. There's the clock. Can you imagine the hands and arms and scramble if they get that in that blue oh area? Boy. In the I'll tell you. <laughs> Look at Lang trying to go through there. Looks like a man going the wrong way in a revolving door. So much traffic in there. <laughs> One minute. Winner plays for the big trophy tonight. The loser, but you won't be able to measure the anguish. Oh boy. Quincy unbeaten. Bennett Academy for the first time. You know, this crowd of 14,000 is just kind of hanging, waiting to just let loose. Conrad, 39 seconds. If anybody other than Conrad shoots the ball, I'm going to be very surprised. Conrad has got a total of 20 points. 23 points for Keith Douglas at the other end. Yeah. And a lot of points for the supporting cast on each side. Here we go. For three minutes now, shy these 15 seconds, Bennett Academy has held the ball. Timeout for the Red Wings. And here we are with 13 seconds to go. Quincy, that far away perhaps from their unbeaten season ending. Bennett Academy, that far away perhaps from a chance at the state championship. You know, I'm not in coaching time, but I'm sitting here with a knot in my stomach. My hands are perspiring. You could pluck me like a violin string, and I don't know why. I mean, I don't care who wins. <laughs> no, if you and I had our brothers, all four of them we've seen today would, would get the big trophy. Because believe me, it's been a superb coaching job and some outstanding basketball. And quite frankly, when you go one overtime, 77-76, and here you are at 49 in another overtime game, how indeed can you pick between four teams like that? It is just the fates. The gods are smiling or frowning on somebody, and who knows? All I can say is, with your nervous stomach and my inability to get things done on the basketball floor, it's a good thing we're sitting here and not having to go out there with those 17 and 18-year-old kids and win it or lose it. I've had trouble reading those cue cards the last couple of times. I know I'm not going to be able to do it now. Listen to this crowd. Quincy is uproaring. Bennett Academy behind us. 13 seconds in overtime. Hey, we may have another three minutes. You never can tell. Yeah. It'll be Odo inbounding the ball, and Rudd comes over to put some pressure he's, on Conrad. Yes, sir. He's going to put the heat on him. And they're going. Now they're in the zone. Ten seconds. In the corner to Bagley to Conrad. He's got to shoot it, I would think. Got to get the shot off. Throws it up. Underneath. Grab. Jump ball. One second. Jump ball. Well, Conrad never really did have a good shot, Coach. No, I tell you, you got to credit Mike Red again. He put the pressure on him. He put so much pressure on it. It was almost like a box and one. Jerry Leggett up doing some coaching. We're going to go another three, I believe. Unless he can tap it in. On, of course, he's jumping against Douglas. No way. Now, Jerry Leggett is concerned about Odo, who's got it. Overtime again. Another session. Both coaches smiling. Both coaches clapping. Three minutes. One shot taken, a jump ball, and we're going to another three minutes. You didn't get involved in things like that, did you? Here's a last look at it, at the jump ball. And you can see Otto there to the left and watch as the tip from Lang goes to him. But Otto never really got that shot away as he was surrounded. Almost a foul, but again, Mike right up there. Yeah, and Keith Douglas. And there's a look at the cheerleaders from Quincy High. 
You didn't get involved in double overtimes, did you? Didn't you just uh, say your contract only said you had to go for 32 and you didn't have to? <laughs> when you coach, never played in overtime. No, oh, we had some. We used to have with Proviso. I tell you, ever been into an overtime game at Proviso High School? You had never lived. Really? Yeah. It's an experience. First, they tell me that our place was pretty bad to play in an overtime, too. <laughs> Nothing like that home floor advantage. That's right. A lot to be said for home cooking. Well, while we're going into it, Tom, I want to congratulate you. 25 years here at the state tournament. I can't believe it. I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right, Jack. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Silver anniversary. Remind me to uh, buy you dinner tonight. I'll take you up on that. Jack Rosenberg wrote that down. He's not going <laughs> to let you forget. <laughs> Lang and Douglas, center court, no lineup changes. Going into our second overtime session as they jockey for position around the midcourt circle. You know the man who put the midcourt line in basketball, Sam Berry, will be inducted into the Hall of Fame in basketball at the end of this month. That is the end of April. Now they're going to de uh, go into the delay. Quincy has the ball. Ray Myers, the great DePaul coach, goes into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah. Jim Enright, fine writer and official out of Chicago. John McClendon from Tennessee State. Sam Berry and Pete Newell, the man who coached San Francisco to an NIT title, to California to an NCAA championship and the Olympic gold medal in 1960. It's a great crowd. That'll be the end of April in Springfield, Mass. He's going to play a little keep away now. Douglas puts it into Keith Douglas over to the side to Bloom and back up. Quincy unbeaten, 31 and 0. Uh -oh. Douglas in the middle, 10 footer. Keith Douglas scores. He's got 25. 51 49 in the second overtime. Only the second time in this game that Quincy has led. Now Bennett Academy with a minute 48 to go. Conrad fake steps in, puts it up. Now that's the shot he should have had two or three minutes ago. Tied at 51. Out of the backcourt, Rudd flips it over to Douglas. Second overtime, and we're tied at 51. Back out to Douglas, to Rudd, to Keith Douglas. Bennett has changed point men out here. Bagley uh, is up there in front instead of Lang. Bagley really cost him that bucket before he let uh, Douglas get behind him. Bloom to Keith Douglas down the right side of the lane with the dribble passed out of Bloom to Douglas. Back out to Douglas to Rudd. Minute six. Douglas baseline works uh -oh. under. Uh -oh. Offensive foul. Uh -oh. Offensive foul. We're going to the other end. 58 seconds, watch it again. All right, we got Keith Douglas. Let's back it up a yeah. little bit, and then we'll see the whole thing. Arnie will save it for us. Okay. Excellent call by the officials. And a gutty call. Oh, yes. <laughs> I would have been interested to see whether the ball had gone in or not had it counted. And that ball rolled right over that rim. Bagley. Time out. All right, let's take a look at it again, Coach. And Bagley, uh, excuse me, it'll be Douglas, 33. Watch him back in. Boom. Good position by Conrad, huh? Very good. Ed. I think a good call. And that could have been a little acting there, too, you know? You never know. <laughs> We're going to take five seconds for station identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago. Jack, I wouldn't have missed it. Two super games this afternoon. Maine South winning in overtime over East Moline. Here we go again. We now we've go. got Who Bill we got? Geist here. Is that Geist? All right, he's a, little, Geist. he's a little more legible than Jerry Leggett. Maybe I can figure this one out. Uh, he heard uh, you talking. <laughs> he's going to hide it. Well, there are no secrets ball. in coaching, they say. <laughs> Every coach steals what he had from somebody else at a clinic and then modifies, perfects it. You go out and find the guys who can play it, huh? Yeah. I'd rather have the guys that can play it. Oh, 
the strategy unless you have those guys. Uh, you need the horses. Yeah. Oh, no. I, it, it's nice to know the game, too. Don't get me wrong. These two fellas know the game. We've got 40 seconds in our second overtime. Jerry Leggett and Bill Geist battling for the right to play for the big trophy tonight. We'll have the ball out of bounds to Bennett Academy, and Odo will inbound the ball for the Red Wings. Tied at 51. Inbound pass, Lang, all the way back out to Bagley, cross court to Conrad. Conrad has a bucket in the overtime. Also with a basket, Douglas in the overtime. Second overtime, mind you. First overtime, nothing. Bennett Academy's going for that last shot. Coach. I can't see that anything has changed defensively. Oh, time out. Conrad calls time for Bennett Academy. 14 seconds. I don't know why they're doing this to a couple of old guys like you and me. They're putting us through the ringer here, Coach. Great game. Great game. There's Jerry Leggett now. Can you look in there and tell me what's going on? Well, I know this, that uh, he says you got to put your hands up. That's for sure. That's the first thing you got to do. And you cannot leave Conrad alone. Can't let Lang get the ball inside. I would suppose that... Uh, He'll give Odo a little room to shoot. Odo may have to wind up the hero whether he wants to or not. Well, Odo can shoot. Yes, last night he looked good. Oh, yes. Last night, Odo had eight points. He's uh, got three today, all in the first half, but he is a good shooter. We're all good shooters out here. Conrad, probably the best outside shooter on the Bennett Academy team, and I don't know. I like Rudd. He can shoot from long range, open ball. Douglas. Douglas better inside. You're looking at Quincy now. Brings him back out with a roar. And once again, a lot of pressure on the officials because any foul called either way could mean the state championship. Lang to inbound the ball for Bennett Academy into Conrad. Conrad with 12 seconds to steal by Rudd. Rudd driving, goes in, takes it back. Douglas scores it. Six seconds left. Bruce Douglas scores it. Timeout by Bennett Academy. A steal by Rudd. Bruce Douglas has scored. Quincy leads 53-51. Oh, what great basketball. I wonder if Arnie's going to give us a replay on that steal by Red. All right, we're going to get one. Here comes the ball into Conrad. Back. Conrad tries to get it back to Lang, and a little ever-present Mike Red in the ball game, in the steal. Just an amazing steal. You know, on the payoff end, here's Rudd with enough presence of mind not to challenge yeah. the big guy. The pass it and in fact, drops it off. And here's Bruce Douglas following the play. I mean, if Jerry Leggett ever wanted to have a coaching film on how to hustle your way, maybe, into the state championship game, he ought to just run that over and over again. Beautiful. The little guy did everything just right. Here's the ball. There's another replay of it, Tom. Watch him dig in there, get it away from Conrad. Keep Lang. it alive. Lang trying to keep up with him. Now watch this pass. He dumps it off right back to Douglas. Oh, yeah. And Douglas eased it over the front. It may have been the winning basket. Six seconds remain. Quincy leads by two. We're in double overtime. Can Bennett Academy pull it out? They've got 95 feet to bring it up the floor. Inbounding Oviedo. Rudd's going to come up and challenge. The pass to Bagley to Conrad. Five seconds, four. In the middle of the lane. He missed it. The tip. It's over. Quincy wins. Quincy wins. 53 51. Two overtime. Lang missed it. The big guy is heartbroken. Surrounded by his coach and teammates. I'm not going to say Lang lost it. I'd rather say Quincy won it. What a finish. What a finish. Quincy winning it. Watch it now. There's Conrad with the ball. Into Lang. Lang has room. Turns. And this is 
how close it was. Look at it go around and come out. He tipped again. It hung on the rim. It fell away and quenched it. Unbeaten plays for the big trophy tonight. And here's Jack Burmaster. Now what else can I say? What a heartbreaking loss for Bennett Academy. You pointed it out. Ah, what a game. All right, let's go to Floyd Brown in Tournament Central. Thank you, Jack. Tom Kelly is on the way here to bring you a game summary. Meanwhile, I'd like to remind all our viewers that we'll be back on the air at 7 tonight to bring you the championship round of play. That's 7 o'clock on all of these same channels. Our coverage will continue after this.